Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar on how to expand your business into a franchise. My name is Corinne Whelan and I'm a senior lawyer in Legal Visions franchising team. I'm joined today by my colleague, Andrew Barr, who's here, uh, who is a trademark attorney in the franchising team also. We'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country today. Legal Vision acknowledges and pays respect to the past, present and emerging traditional custodians and elders of this nation. In particular, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, whose land Legal Vision's headquarters is situated on and the various lands on which those of you are joining us today. So before we begin, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, you will be emailed a copy of this webinar um, and the recording that we do today. If you have any questions, uh, please submit them in the chat box and please also complete the survey after the webinar. Today, we'll be discussing the following. We're gonna be talking about trademarks and the registration process. We're going to be talking about company structure and franchises. We're talking about the, imp the importance of your systems and processes, the importance of an operations manual, your key legal documents that you'll need in franchising. And then at the end, we'll have a little Q and A um, and we'll talk a little bit about our pro membership and uh, a free consultation that's available to you for attending our webinar. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll be asking some of your questions, so please don't forget to submit them um, through the chat function and we'll answer them. Um, so now, Andrew is going to speak about the importance of registering your trademark. Thanks, Karim. So to begin with, what is a trademark? A trademark is a word, phrase or logo that's connected to and used to identify and distinguish your business. So for example, the Golden Arches, and I'm loving it, which would be McDonald's, and brand names such as Coca-Cola. So most of you are probably already operating under some sort of brand name, and it's important to register this as a trademark in order to protect it. Some of you may already have a registered business name, but this is not the same as a registered trademark and does not offer any protection. We recommend all businesses, whether you intend to franchise or not, to register your trademark. Uh, the importance of registering your trademark is to ensure that uh, you have the exclusive right uh, to use that trademark, which helps prevent others uh, from using that name or logo and to take action against those who do, because some people would want to benefit from your established reputation and goodwill. For this reason, a registered trademark is valuable, and since franchisees are paying to use your name and logo and to benefit from your established reputation and goodwill, franchisees want to know that you've registered and protected your trademarks. Lastly, a trademark registration lasts for a period of 10 years and can be renewed indefinitely, meaning that you can keep renewing the trademark every 10 years over and over again to ensure you've got that lasting protection. The trademark registration process begins with engaging legal vision. Uh, we do a preliminary risk assessment to determine the likelihood of the trademark being successfully registered. We will look for other registered trademarks that might be the same or similar to yours and advise on whether you will, uh, your trademark application is likely to be successful. On some occasions, there will already be similar trademarks registered, and this may result in you having to rebrand or change your name before you launch. Uh, once filed with IP Australia, IP Australia will examine the trademark and then the trademark will be advertised and there will be an opposition period this process takes about seven to eight months until the trademark is registered. However, protection is backdated to the date the application was filed. You should note that the registration is for Australia only and separate applications are required for other countries, which Legal Vision can also assist with. So uh, the, the trademark registration leads on to the, uh, the importance of proper company structures and the structure that we recommend is incorporating a holding company to own the trademarks, a company to act as a franchisor to enter into the franchise agreements with franchisees, and if your business operates from premises, a separate leasing company to enter into those leases. This is the usual structure that most franchisors adopt. The importance of having this type of structure is for your protection and the protection of your assets. As mentioned, the holding company should own the trademarks, and any other intellectual property. The holding company should not trade with or enter into contracts with any third parties. And this is to protect and not put at risk the valuable intellectual property. 
The franchising company's primary purpose will be to enter into the franchise agreements with franchisees. The franchising company generally will not have any assets, so that the, if there is a dispute with a franchisee, the franchisee, franchising company is sued, there will not be any assets put at risk. Similarly, the leasing company's sole purpose will be to enter into leases that will be used for the franchise business. The leasing company will not have any assets, so that there is, if there is a dispute with a landlord, such as outstanding rent, and the leasing company is sued, there will be no assets put at risk and the leasing company can be wound up if necessary. The company structuring process is usually where the founders are shareholders of the, com of the holding company. There can be a, a, a trust structure above that if you wish. Uh, the franchising and leasing companies will be subsidiaries of the holding company. If there's an existing operating company, this can either remain outside of the new structure or can be restructured to be a subsidiary of the holding company. Likewise, any new corporate stores should be owned by a new operating company and that will either sit within the structure or as a subsidiary of the holding company or remain separate. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about your systems and processes. So what are your systems and processes? These are the ways in which your business currently operates and functions and refers to the ways in which your franchise network will also operate. An example of a system is a, like something like point of sale software that you might use in your business already. An example of a process might be how you normally deal with new customers or leads on a daily basis. When referring, um, sorry, um, when franchising, it's really important to ensure your systems and processes are clear and refined. The reason for that is that you're, you want consistency in your business and you want consistency across the franchise network. While some franchisors give thought to how the franchise network will run after they franchise, it's important to consider this prior to franchising so that the processes are set up clearly um, in your network from the beginning. Here are just some types of systems and processes you might consider streamlining before you franchise. Things like point of sale software, reporting requirements and obligations around sales data, profitability, or even accounting obligations, payment obligations for franchise things. For example, you might want to direct debit franchise fees, ordering of products and equipment in the business, customer relationship data and procedures, uh, the em employee onboarding documentation and procedures, uh, and any software systems or even intranets for franchise related questions and for where the operations manual would be contained. So the importance of ensuring your systems and processes are replicable is really, really crucial. This is important to get these systems um, right so that they can be replicated within the franchise network. The ultimate goal of a franchise network is to have multiple franchisees who have taken your model and who are equipped to replicate it in a new location. That replication is a lot easier for you and your franchisee when you have a clear and established system and process for running one of your franchise businesses. So moving on and basically relevant to what we've just discussed is the operations manual. This relates back to your systems and processes as it will contain all of the know-how and all of the how-to on, I guess, those operations, those systems, those processes of your business. It should be a document that summarises all of those, all of that know-how in a clear and concise way. The importance of an operations manual in a franchise network is, is very crucial. Uh, it's, it's crucial to the expansion as it provides all of your franchisees with the information they need on how to replicate your business successfully. The operations manual is also highly confidential as it is essentially a playbook on all the key information required to understand how your business operates. The operations manual will contain a lot of information, such as how to handle customers, including how to deal with complaints, who your approved suppliers are and, who your approved, and what your approved product list is, information on how to onboard employees and often any employee policies, it will contain resources which the franchisee may require in the operation of their business or as part of being a franchise. And it will contain a lot more than that. That's just a real high level summary of the types of things you would want to include in your operations manual. So the next question is, well, how do you prepare an operations manual? 
to prepare one, you should start looking at all of the systems and processes you have in place within your own business and start to take what is that usual information, usually it's all contained up here in your mind, and start putting it onto paper. Start writing it down and getting all of it out and thinking about what it would look like. The best operations manuals are drafted by franchise consultants who work with you by discussing those aspects of the business and help summarise them um, within a detailed and official operations manual. Most of the uh, operations manual is not actually legal. Legal information is what's contained in the franchise agreement, which we'll talk to a little bit later. However, there may be some policies and information within the operations manual that is legal um, and that might have legal implications. On those items, we always recommend working with a franchising lawyer as well as a consultant in order to, you know, get out those sections that have legal implications. This might include things like employment contracts, privacy policies, or dispute notices, which are usually all contained in the operations manual. Um, so when should you provide your operations manual? We get this question a lot. So given the operations manual contains incredibly confidential information, you should only provide this to franchisees in the following situations. Before they become a franchisee, only when they have signed a non-disclosure agreement, which you would generally provide them before giving them a franchise agreement, and generally by only allowing them to inspect it rather than have a copy of it. Once they sign their franchise agreement, which will contain relevant restraints and confidentiality obligations, then they can have a copy, but be sure to make sure that they do hand that back when they leave the network. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the legal documents and obligations now. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of an explanation about the Franchising Code of Conduct. So all franchise relationships in Australia are actually governed by what we call the Franchising Code. This means that franchising is regulated and franchisors have extra obligations when it comes to their franchise network. Most importantly, the code dictates the certain ways in which a franchisor can recruit and onboard franchisees, the types of documents that you need to provide to franchisees and when they need to be provided, the ways in which franchising disputes are handled, uh, the ways a franchise agreement can end. It talks about the types of fines and penalties a franchisor may face for a breach of their obligations. And it also deals with the way the parties to franchise agreements must act including imposing what we call an obligation of good faith into the franchising relationship. So the, it's really important as a franchisor to understand your obligations and to maintain compliance with the code. Franchisors have, um, should have an experienced franchising team to ensure they are constantly in compliance with the code. As the code applies to every franchisee you bring on board, it's also super important to ensure you are complying at every point in your franchise journey, whether it is when you first franchise the business, i.e. when you set up your documents initially, um, when you're bringing franchisees on board to ensure you meet all the legal timeframes and obligations, um, and even when it comes to helping franchisees leave the network, either during the term or at the end of the term of a franchise. Uh, the code is constantly evolving. It's actually changed several times in the last year. Um, and it also requires franchisors to update their disclosure document every year. So once you become a franchisor, it's not like it's just over at that point. You do have to have an ongoing compliance element. Um, if you do not comply with the code, there are now very harsh penalties for franchisors. So um, we definitely recommend talking to a lawyer and ensuring you, know, you aren't subject to investigations by the ACCC. Cool. So what are the necessary legal documents? The main documents are the franchise agreement. This is the main document which will be entered into between you and each of your franchisees. It outlines the commercial details of the relationship, including the types of fees payable and when they are payable, who the people uh, involved in the franchise business will be, how any leases or premises will be held, if that's applicable to the business, the obligations of the franchisee and the franchisor, the areas of law which the franchisee must abide by, the details of the territory or marketing area and whether this is exclusive or not, and there's many other things which are captured in the franchise agreement. There's also the disclosure document, which is, a, uh, which is in a form which is prescribed by the code. It summarizes the obligations and information contained in the franchise agreement and also requires franchisors to provide extra pieces of information, including things like litigation history, the financial position of the franchisor, lists of current and previous franchisees, 
the estimated cost of uh, operating a franchise and details regarding the corporate structure of the franchisor. Finally, there's the key fact sheet, uh, which was recently introduced last year. It's a shorter form and also prescribed under the code. Its purpose is to summarize the information contained in the disclosure document and franchise agreement in a way that's more easy to understand. The, your legal documents should be drafted properly and with, the legal, and with legal assistance for several reasons, but most importantly, to ensure that they reflect your model and system so that you, can fran so that you and your franchisees are clear on the relationship expectations from the beginning and to ensure that you're legally compliant and avoid being penalized for non-compliance with the code. Cool. So that's really just our summary of franchising in Australia. Um, so I think where that's kind of at the end of the formal, let's give you a high level summary of franchising. So Andy? Uh, you might find our franchise or toolkit useful. You can download it for free today by accessing the handout section of the webinar. It covers most of what we've discussed today. You can take away, read it and uh, hopefully what we've discussed today things will start falling into place yeah. so coming up uh, we have another webinar that you might find useful uh, your day in court what happens when your business goes to court it's on thursday the 2nd of june at 11 a.m uh, and we're going to start uh, answering some of your questions now uh, so some of these have been sent uh, earlier on so to begin with we've been asked how to enforce quality assurance or quality control with franchisees, in particular in relation to food quality control? Yeah, so this is a really good question and it comes up a lot. There's a few ways you can enforce quality assurance and quality control, particularly with regard to food service and preparation. The main one would be obviously containing a clause in the franchise agreement that sets out what your expectations are and that would you know, have an obligation to comply with relevant laws in relation to food quality and standards. However, beyond that, you should also set out any standard operating procedures and any kind of detail about that food preparation within your operations manual as well. Then the other thing that you should do once it's in your franchise agreement and in your operations manual to maintain compliance with it, you should regularly inspect your franchisees for compliance with those obligations. Now, I say that that should be probably beyond what the normal council food health and safety obligations would be. So you should probably have a member of your team regularly auditing or having a look at those compliance obligations with your franchise network. Correct. Uh, and secondly, legally requiring franchisees to use certain products and materials. Is this common practice? Yeah, it's super common in franchising. In fact, it's generally recommended and the most common thing done. So um, obviously that's what makes your brand unique uh, and it allows consistency. So if you do have what we call an approved supplier or an approved product or service, um, definitely telling franchisees that they need to use those certain products and services and those certain suppliers is very common practice. It would be generally you'd have an obligation in the franchise agreement that would say they have to use those approved suppliers and then the operations manual would set out who those approved suppliers are and that just allows you to change them as well. Cool. Great. And then uh, how difficult is it to revoke a franchisee's rights if they breach the above? Can you give some examples or run through the process? Yeah, so um, it's not too hard. However, I should put a caveat on that. Um, so in order to revoke franchisees' rights or breach them for non-compliance with you know, things like food health and safety or not using approved suppliers, uh, it's actually the code sets out the procedure for breaching franchisees, the amount of notice, uh, the way you have to notify them, and also the dispute resolution process if you do end up with in a dispute or if there is a question over, you know, whether there was they were validly notified. So you can enforce those obligations and the code prescribes how to do so. Um, and then beyond that, if they don't rectify those breaches, then you may move to terminate. Again, the code provides how you can move to terminate a franchisee for non-compliance. Um, there could be other things that you could do, which is, you know, informal as well, sitting down with the franchisee, having a frank discussion, you know, informally before moving to go to the formal breach notice kind of procedure. Great. Cool. Um, a few more questions that we have as well. Um, I'm going to get Andy to answer these. So 
we intend to establish a franchise relationship and need to understand the process, you know, relevant documentation necessary for refining our financial models, systems, processes and operations um, and ensure compliance with the franchising code of conduct. <laughs> Well, hopefully we've answered some of those questions in this webinar today, yeah. but just to touch on some of those points in a bit more detail, it's great that you're thinking about these things. It's really important to get these things right before you launch your franchise and take it to market. Things like refining your financial model, generally you could work with, if you've got an existing accountant, preferably maybe an accountant who's got experience with franchising, Definitely. alternatively, uh, a lot of franchise consultants will have somebody who's experienced in that area. They'll be able to do your financial model and determine what the correct fee structure will be because we do see some franchise networks fail where potentially the royalty fee is too high and it's just not leave, leaving enough profit for the franchisee to survive effectively or make enough money. Uh, so that is something really important to determine and get right uh, before you launch. Systems, processes, these are the things which uh, you're doing in your business day to day, as Corinne touched on earlier on. So it's important that you kind of land on something which you're happy with, that is settled, that hopefully isn't going to chop and change too much. Then once you've got all those things, they can be detailed in the operations manual. Again, you may have some sort of, you know, an employee manual or a management manual that you're able to adapt and expand upon that would be able to uh, be given to franchisees as an operation manual. Alternatively, you can work with a franchise consultant. That's one of their key areas where they work with you in the business. They detail everything, they write it down and they prepare this operations manual. And as Corinne touched on, the more detailed your operations manual is, the more valuable it is for your franchisees. It really is a playbook, a step-by-step -step guide, and it also ensures consistency across your franchise network. Yeah. Uh, finally, ensuring compliance with franchise and code, that's where we would work with you, providing that assistance, obviously preparing those initial documents for you. We would be working with you so they reflect your business model and your network. Uh, and then obviously because there are those ongoing obligations such as updating the franchise and code, uh, updating the disclosure document each year, obviously we send out reminders. We say that you need to do this within this period. We would again work with you to make sure that the information is correct. And then if anything does come up as it always does from time to time, how do you change this? How do you introduce that? How do you breach this franchisee? We're obviously able to, able to provide that guidance and ensure compliance with the franchising code of conduct. Yeah, cool. So another question or maybe more of a comment was um, our electrical contracting company has been providing electrical services in the wine industry um, in the Margaret River for only over 10 years. We're considering franchising into other wine regions across Australia. Um, yeah. Sound like a good plan? <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. Uh, you can franchise just about any business because uh, really it's all about having systems and processes which are replicable. Yeah. So, I mean, if you've been operating for 10 years in the Margaret River wine region, no doubt you've got a solid reputation there. And again, when we touched on the trademarks earlier, People will know your name. It will have goodwill associated with it. Franchisees will want to be part of that brand. And again, you know, could go to other wine regions throughout Australia. And people, you know, clients would be able to look online and see, well, you know, this brand has been operating in Margaret River for 10 years. That's great. I'm going to trust them. I'm going to sign up with this franchisee, you know, in, in whatever reason, uh, region around Australia. Yeah. Um, and then the, one of the other questions was, uh, can we franchise our disability business? Uh, yep, absolutely. Again, you can franchise just about any business. It really is about having those systems and processes in place so that anyone can come on board, follow your operations manual and ensure that they're providing the, the goods or services in a way that's uh, consistent with your expectations and with all the other franchisees in the network. Another reason why people uh, join a franchise is not only just to have access to those systems and processes but again because of the goodwill that's uh, already been established in the brand name so for your disability business absolutely you can franchise it you just need to uh, work on the strength of your brand and again register your trademark and then secondly have all those systems and processes documented in an operations manual that can be handed over to your franchisees 
Yeah. Uh, another question that's come through, how can we know when a business may be suitable to use uh, the franchise business model? Would this be suitable for an established consulting business in the environmentally suitable, uh, sustainable development sector and is considering uh, like a long-term exit strategy? So, I mean, within Australia or, you know, anywhere, uh, you've really got three different types of business model. You've got for growth, you've got corporate growth, uh, which is just you keep opening your own sites, you know, an office in Melbourne, an office in Sydney, you're responsible, you've got the employees and you retain, uh, you know, 100% of the profits, you also have 100% of the risk. Uh, secondly, there's licensing, which is in Australia because of the franchising code of conduct, which is so broad, licensing is actually quite a narrow area. Mm. You could license your trademarks, so somebody could operate under your brand name, but you can't uh, put in any uh, systems and processes that a licensee would need to follow. Because as soon as you do that, you're into the franchising space, which means that you need to comply with the franchising code of conduct. So again, if uh, for your whatever business model, if you were happy for somebody to open a site down in Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane and just use your brand name, but you had no say in what you know uh, client management system or what how they were corresponding with clients, then that would be an option. But then there's franchising, and there is a reason why franchising is so popular in Australia. We're one of the most heavily uh, franchised countries in the world per capita. Uh, so it's because it is a tried and tested system. So again, if you want to replicate whatever your business is doing currently, franchising is the way that you can open throughout Australia and try to ensure that what, no matter where they are, they're providing the same client experience. So in regards to an, a long-term exit strategy, you do obviously get some people who come along who are looking to buy franchise networks, uh, whether that's private equity, whether it's somebody else looking to buy you as the franchisor. Again, it's important to have that company structuring because it's the holding company which owns the IP. That's where all the value is. And if this, it's been structured correctly, where if it's the leasing companies or the franchising companies or subsidiaries, it makes it a much easier transaction, which is attractive to any purchaser. Mm, yeah, definitely. So the next question is, I think I've actually touched on that, but I'll hand over to Corinne just in case she does have anything else to add. So the next question was, I'm not sure whether a franchise is the best business structure for me. What are the alternatives? Yeah, so Andy did just kind of yeah. talk to that a little bit. So licensing is an alternative, but when you do go down the license model, you need to remember that the main difference is you have less control. So if you do decide to license, you can't exert much control over the licensee's business because as soon as you start doing that, it becomes a franchise anyway, due to the definitions of the code. So that is an alternative. Um, it's one that we would probably want to work with you uh, to figure out whether you want to franchise or license, just because you don't want to be accidentally captured by the code and then potentially, you know, have disputes and fines thrown at you because you didn't comply with it. <laughs> so I would say get legal advice about your model and about what you're looking to do. Uh, because yeah, li licensing is an option and an alternative. However, it's, you know, it comes with some warning. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, yeah, you could expand through your own corporate stores um, and do it that, that way. But again, you need a lot of capital to do so and you need to stay heavily involved in the business. So the, the benefit to franchising is that you allow other people to essentially, you know, run the business for you. They're doing their own thing and you just retain some of the sound of some of the money from that. Um, cool. And then. Andy, one of the questions that's also been asked is, how um, is a product versus service franchise different? Well, as, as I mentioned earlier, you can franchise any business. So whether that's, uh, you know, hospitality is a good example. They're serving products, really. Uh, you know, whether it's McDonald's selling burgers, Crust selling pizzas. Uh, as Corinne mentioned, there is that uh, requirement to use, you know, approved products from approved suppliers to ensure that consistency of the product that's being provided to customers. Alternatively, alternatively you do have service-based uh, franchises and they would be, for example, like the gyms group. So whether it's gyms mowings, gyms windows, gyms gutters, and that's often described as a bit of a man in a van franchise. So it might be an owner operator, uh, there's requirements of, you know, his vehicle must be branded, he has to wear a uniform, 
in those situations, quite often he'll have an exclusive territory. Uh, and again, the, the benefit of being part of a franchise is everybody knows the gyms group. So lots of people, when they Google, you know, I need my grass cut or, you know, any of the other services that he provides, you know, whether it's an electrician, they'll Google it. Uh, the branding that goes into a franchise, they'll often be one of the first things which comes up in Google. People will click on it, you put in your uh, post postcode and you'll be directed to that franchisee. And he'll, so without having to necessarily do much marketing himself, he'll be uh, given leads by the franchisor. So again, that is one of the benefits for franchisees to join a franchise network, that they've got this client referral system in place. So the, uh, the principles are effectively the same. It's all about operating under a brand, following systems and processes. One might be in premises, uh, providing goods, selling products. Another one might be uh, providing services, but again, in strict compliance with an operations manual. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that concludes all of the questions that you have all sent through. Um, thank you for all those questions. They were fantastic. Um, I just want to speak a little bit about being a pro member um, with Legal Vision. So we have created a whole membership based product um, and service that we provide to all of our you know, franchisors. The way it works is basically all of the legal documents we've spoken about today, um, so the franchise agreement, the disclosure document, the key facts sheet, um, non-disclosure agreements, everything that you need to franchise a business, all of those documents um, are included within Legal Vision's pro membership. Um, so Beyond that, there are other things that are included in membership. Um, that company structure we're talking about, those trademarks that you want to register, we do all of that within pro membership. And the benefit of that um, is basically franchisors want a lawyer that can do all of this for them. They want a lawyer that sticks with them long term. So our whole goal is to stick with you long term. We don't just want to franchise your business and send you on your way and say, here you go, here's all the documents. We want to work with you as you grow and expand your network. So. Also included in your membership is things like those franchise grants. Every time you bring on a franchisee, we'll help you bring them on board. We'll do those documents for them and particularize them for each grant. So within our membership, we do a lot for franchisors. Um, and then there's all of these other benefits that you can see on the slide. So we do unlimited document drafting and reviews. Uh, we give you legal advice consultations. So maybe you're just interested in franchising and not quite sure. You can jump on a call and say, hey, I'd like to speak to Corinne about franchising. I don't know whether I want to do a franchise or a license, can we have a half hour chat about it? Um, we do, like I said, AU and New Zealand uh, trademark applications. We guarantee quick turnaround for legal work, a lot quicker than most other firms. It's very affordable um, and, you know, we have a lot of in-house lawyers who are specialised in what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, you can, you know, book unlimited legal advice consultations and get all that. So, if you'd like to know more about Legal Vision and more about our pro membership, you can request a complimentary consultation off the back of this webinar. Um, you're eligible to receive that. Um, we can help with expanding your business into a franchise. Um, to book that consultation, just leave your contact details in the survey and they will appear. that will appear at the end of the webinar. Um, you can also email reply at legalvision.com.au and mention that you watched this webinar. Cool. So I think that is all for today. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope we hear from you soon. And, you know, some of you are interested in learning more about franchising. Um, Andy and I are usually the ones that do, do strategy sessions and we'll talk to you about becoming a member. So we're more than happy to meet some of you hopefully after this as well. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye.